Hi, and welcome to the Middle Room Workshop. Today, I'm going to show you how you can cut leather with your laser engraver. Without further ado, let's get into it. Okay, this video is uh, in reply to one of your comments of about two months ago. And the question in that comment was, can you engrave four to six ounces of leather. Now, I haven't ever had experience with leather before, neither with uh, regular tools nor with the laser, but I promised that I would have uh, find some uh, sheet of leather and give it a try. And that's exactly what I did. I went on Amazon and I bought uh, this bag with random scrap in it. Uh, basically inside you have different thicknesses, color dye and grain type of leather. And I started my testing. Now, if your concern is engraving, engraving is not a problem at all. Uh, by changing the power and the speed of the axis, you're basically varying the depth of your uh, engraved project, which is pretty much the same like if you would have engraved wood or MDF or any other similar type of uh, material. However, I found that cutting later is a little bit trickier. Now, all the tests that I performed with the uh, 30 watt module, which as you know is now that, were unsuccessful. The problem is that I wasn't able to, to go all the way through the sheet of leather. Now, the things that make that makes cutting leather trickier it's uh, because of the structure of the leather. See, leather is, um, I could say, a composite material where you have this uh, um, layering structure in here and each layer has a different uh, consistency. Now, uh, we could summarize that we have basically two sides, so two layers. In reality, they are more, but the most important are the outermost layer, which I uh, like to call the beauty layer, and it's called grain. And this is basically the part that you would like to be exposed in your project. And then the innermost layer, or I should say uh, the intermediate layer, because the innermost regularly is stripped off from the uh, layer. And it's called chorus, and it's made up of this um, fluffy, hairy substance. Okay, they are basically fiber. And this is what makes cutting leather with this type of technology, with a laser, particularly tricky. The problem is that because of this fluffy area, you are unable to get uh, a clean cut all the way through. In fact, uh, also now I've upgraded to the 40 watt module and I'm actually able to uh, cut through the later. I haven't ever gotten a perfect, perfect cut. You will always have a couple of fibers still uh, remaining attached, non-cut, non but they can easily be, uh, you know, like turned apart or uh, you can use a cutter or a scissor to basically uh, clean the mess up. Now, I've been making many different tests with uh, the various uh, thicknesses and type of leather that I got in the bag uh, with both the 30 and the 40 watt laser modules. And I've even tried to basically design uh, the mirror of the uh, test project and to try and cut it from the uh, chorus layer to the, from the fluffy layer facing up. And even this didn't work out. So, although on my mind there was the idea that uh, once you pass the first layer, then it would have basically cut all the way through. Actually, it seems like this uh, fluffy layer, it's uh, very difficult for the laser to, to pass through. I've even tried to basically create a sacrificial surface uh, to basically try and compress uh, the sheet of leather by putting a layer of uh, uh, play wood on top, tiny one with uh, uh, dumbbell weights, 
so that I could basically go through. Now, that eventually turned out working out with a 40 watt laser module, but that's definitely not something that you want to do. I mean, you must have a sacrificial uh, uh, sheet of play wood or similar material so that you can achieve that. So it was clear at that point that the only way to go all the way through the sheet of uh, layer is to compress the fluffy layer, the cores. At least to do that temporarily while you are cutting. The same way it worked out with the sacrificial sheet and weights on top. And that's when basically I started experimenting with uh, iron. So I basically uh, started to iron uh, the sheet in the area where I wanted to uh, perform the cut and that turns out giving some uh, good results. Now, something that I found particularly important when working with leather is that you want your leather to be as flat as possible. So if you have any crisp or folds, you want to get rid of that. And one way uh, you can do that is to use a uh, typical iron. So you'll put this on a flat, uh, a surface like a desk or your ironing board if you have one and then to basically iron it. I would recommend iron, ironing always from the fluffy side, from the chorus side because ironing from the grain side might end up uh, discoloring your leather if it's tinted like this one and also you might end up uh, burning it so it's something that uh, you want to pay attention to. Another way uh, to make it flat, uh, but not as a start, you will still need to iron it the first time if you receive the ladder with those folds, It's to basically store your ladder in a flat laid position and with some weight on top of it. That will ensure that basically the ladder will retain uh, the flatness. Now, the reason why you want to be as flat as possible is uh, one, and I think it's the obvious one, uh, to increase the uh, precision of your cut so that you don't have distortion due to the uh, crispy uh, folds here. The other thing is that by having a crispy area, which means uh, an elevated area into your uh, uh, working area there in the laser machine, you you might basically end up with the, with the elevated area getting out of the focusing range of your laser and basically remain uncut. So that's something that you want to pay attention to. Now the third thing that uh, you achieve when you iron your sheet of laser, it's basically compressing the chorus layer, the fluffy layer so that it makes it easier for the laser to work its way through the entire sheet of laser. All right, and that's pretty much all. Uh, now, a final recommendation. Uh, if you intend to work with leather, ensure to be in a well-ventilated area, or if you have an extractor, just to, to put it close to the uh, laser machine because cutting later, cutting or engraving later in general will produce very toxic fumes and that's because of the um, color dye in them which is uh, a chemical that it's basically into the material and this will, when it's burning, is basically emitting very toxic fumes. Uh, so you might start coughing with it and also you might start having uh, other complication, health complication with it. So it's, this is very, very important. The other thing is do not leave your uh, laser machine unattended while it's uh, uh, engraving or cutting later because uh, I've been uh, noticing instances where uh, the later piece kind of catches some fire. It's not a big fire, but it's basically I, I've been noticing some flame coming out of it. So it's something that you want to pay attention to. Uh, and the third thing is that it is better not to use the uh, highest power in your laser machine, especially if you're using the 40 watt module, dual laser, which is very, very powerful. 
Um, so you will need to find a compromise between power and speed so that you can get the clean and also tiny cut all the way uh, around your project. I hope you found uh, this video helpful. If you liked it, click the thumb up button below. If you have any comment, leave them below. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like this one. Ciao for now!